Highway 106 at 1023, an hour three of the Mountain Kubota Afternoon Show. Jeremiah Farmer bringing it to you from the Discovery Chevrolet Buick GMC Studios here in Boone. We hope each and every one of y'all is having a great day. And look who's joined us for our weekly segment, Monday Evening Driver. Kind of like Monday Morning Quarterback, but we talk all things NASCAR with host of the All Request Short Order Lunch, Brian Fisher. Thank you, Jay. Happy Monday to you, brother. Happy Monday to you. Have you tried the Carl Edwards backflip? <laughs> Have you ever tried to do that? I'm afraid I'm going to break something, pull something, or, you know, it looks enticing. I yeah. mean, we saw it two weeks in a row now. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the day where his toes catch the lip of the window, <laughs> yeah. and it's going to be bad. But, dude, Gibbs is dominating. Is anybody ever going to stop these Toyotas? Oh, no. we, we talked about it last week, Hal. They were going to be dominant. I really looked for Denny Hamlin to be dominant, and he was in the early part of the race before uh, he had some struggles on pit road and a, a couple of, of mechanical issues there. They battled back, though, and every one of those Joe Gibbs cars was near the front or in the front mm -hmm. at one point in that race or another, and it looks like that they're going to be uh, the, the team to beat this year at every racetrack because we've been to all sorts of different racetracks. They've been uh, up in the top ten, top five in every race. Well, let me ask you, did you see anything wrong with the finish yesterday? I, I, I don't think I saw anything wrong with it. You know, DW was up there <laughs> squalling about it's a teammate, but there are no teammates on the last lap there of the race. There are no teammates. The last lap of the race, when you come down to it, Carl Edwards just proved to everybody how racing should be yeah. yesterday. Yeah. That's exactly. He had the better car. He didn't take Kyle out. Right, right. Kyle, Kyle went down. Blocked his line. Carl said, hey, man, I, I've been here. I'm faster. You need to let me go or I'm going to move you. And he moved him. And it's like Carl said in his uh, in his interview, Victory Lane, yesterday. He said, you know, he's got wins. I've got wins. We're out here racing for trophies. Yeah. We've already made it. You know, if you can go win another one, you might as well go win another one. And Carl, you know, after the finish that he had at Phoenix, he wasn't about to let another one slip by. Right. Right. And, I mean, we saw that. Kyle Busch's wife was probably more mad than he was. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, if if Rowdy was in the same position, he would have done the same thing. Oh, or I, worse. Yeah, I didn't see a thing wrong with it. That's that's part of it. If you can do that without wrecking somebody, uh, that's that's the way to do it. And, and Carl Edwards deserves credit for, for how he handled those last few laps and come from behind and yeah. won. As Mike Joy would say, the bump and dump and yeah. run. Is that <laughs> yeah. what it was? <laughs> I don't know what Mike Joy was talking about up there. <laughs> Hardly ever do. But uh, we are headed to a totally different racetrack, Talladega Super Speedway, the biggest and baddest on the NASCAR circuit. And uh, we're talking drafting. We're talking uh, speeds upwards of 200 mile an hour. Who's going to be dominant this weekend in Alabama? So hard to pick these restrictor plate tracks. It's impossible. You cannot pick because this is an evil, uh, even playing field. It might be evil too. I don't know yeah. what we might see. There's no telling what we'll see in Talladega. But this is a track where each team comes and brings their A game because these smaller teams know that they can run right up there with the big dogs. I mean, mm -hmm. you've seen some underdog names win races at Talladega and Daytona before and really make a name for themselves. And that's one of the reasons why we love going to these tracks because, you know, everybody, it, it's even killed. And the racing's exciting. If we see anything like we did at Daytona at the beginning of the year at Talladega yep. this year, we talked to Grant uh, Lynch earlier in the week. He promised a good time at Talladega, and I think they're going to deliver – um, some names I think you might see to contend with, uh, definitely Joey Logano, mm -hmm. Brad Keselowski, uh, Dale Jr., oh, he's yeah. always great at Talladega. Uh, those Hendrick cars, I'm sure, will be strong at Talladega. They love running up, up the front together. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's going to be a, a, another team race. And I, who knows if Kyle Busch is going to push Carl to victory <laughs> this weekend at Talladega right. or not. You might see something happen there. It's, uh, it's definitely going to be crazy. Now, i got to ask you, uh, before we go, uh, you're a Kane fan, and you're also a Chase Elliott man. Yeah. So when it comes down to the Dew decision of 2016, are you voting for Mountain Dew Pitch Black oh, or Mountain man. Dew Baja Blast? It's nothing against Chase, uh, but uh, I have to go with the Pitch Black. Just, oh, wow, yeah. just on taste alone. We had mm -hmm. some in the studio here mm -hmm. the other day that our friends from uh, West Jefferson Dr. Pepper Bottling Company had uh, sent over to us on taste alone. I'm going with with pitch black. I like okay. it. I liked Casey's car yesterday too. That's it was pretty slick. It was sharp. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy. I know at Talladega, we're looking forward to the big one or maybe three or four big ones. 
We'll see what happens. You'll hear it this Sunday here on Highway 106 and 1023, and you'll hear fish tomorrow from 11 to 2. That's right, taking your requests all show long. And we're back to the music now on the Mountain Kubota Afternoon Show.